speak next. So we have um, Miss Bethan Cowley, who's the lead nurse for inherited cardiac conditions at the Royal Brompton Hospital. And she's going to talk to us about that really important area that Lucy touched upon earlier, which was that transition from paediatric to adult services. Um, I'm going to welcome Bethan, but I think, are you still having problems with your slides and would you prefer Andrea to share them for you? Hi, Pass. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, please. I'm having a bit of a nightmare with Teams. I'm really sorry. I may have to switch off my camera as well because I keep cutting in and out. So apologies. Super. You just let Andrea know when you'd like to advance. Thank you very no, much. I'm sorry. It sounds a bit naff when I say next slide, please. So I apologise now, Andrea. Um, and thank you for your help. <laughs> no, I am gonna switch off. I'm going to switch off my camera, though, because in other um, meetings I've had today, I do keep cutting out. So apologies, but I'll switch on at the end as well. Um, so um, hello everyone, I hope, you, I hope you're enjoying the day so far, another great click session. Um, I hope it can continue. So I've been asked today to talk about um, paediatric transition to adult services, but I'm really trying to move away from this, so I'm sorry guys, but I've changed the title to the importance of transition. And that's because I really want to move away from the, the fact that transition is sometimes seen as a single event as opposed to a process. And it's more than just transition to adult services about transitioning of the adolescent into adulthood as opposed to just services. So next slide please Andrea. <laughs> so a couple of a few aims today so um, there you go four of them for us uh, the importance of a dedicated ICC transition service, considerations of an effective ICC transition service, young people in digital care because that is important especially now more than ever and some future thoughts and possibilities. Next slide please Andrea. So um, Let's talk about adolescence and young adulthood in general. So we know that the transition from adolescence to adulthood is a, you know, it's a challenging time, um, both physically, psychologically and cognitively um, and, for, and in social change as well. But then when you add in all the added issues of a chronic condition or a disability, it just impacts them so much more, makes life so much more difficult for them, or it can do. So what we know is that well, in the UK, I'm one in that I'm now in the silence. Um, Hi Tessa. In the UK, one in seven young people have uh, some sort of disability or a, a long term medical illness, uh, i.e. asthma, diabetes, epilepsy. Um, you know, but the good news is, is that 90 percent of children with, with advances in care, 90 percent of children with congenital heart disease, for example, are surviving into adulthood. And similarly with cystic fibrosis, again, we're seeing more people, um, uh, you know, live longer and better quality of life. And in fact, that's an old statistic, 2008. Um, I'm sure that that percentage has jumped up even more with advances in treatment. But we are seeing young people that are progressing through adulthood. But the more children that we see with chronic disease, uh, conditions, the more room there is for transitional care from child to adult services. Next slide, please. So as I just touched upon, um, oh, sorry. Oh yeah, and can you click again, please, Andrea? And again, and again, thank you. So there is evidence that the process of transition from paediatric to adult services is often association, associated with a deterioration in their health um, with, with young people with chronic conditions. And as I've mentioned, if you add some of the other factors that affect young people with ICCs or at risk of ICCs, it becomes more of an issue even more so. The, the chronic illness, the change, the being different, perhaps looking after a sick relative, you know, being a main carer, seeing someone out, a sibling being poorly. And then, of course, there's some young people that have also experienced a tragic family sudden death as well. And this makes this whole press, um, process and areas of development in adolescence so much more challenging. So, but there's evidence to suggest that if there's good transitional care, some of the poorer outcomes associated with young people moving from um, paediatric to adult um, health services can be improved and they can reduce um, what we do see is non-adherence to treatments because there is a risk of that during transition and disengagement with services. And then some of the more serious consequences that we see in young people with chronic conditions is that they will have a higher physical clinical mortal mortality outcomes, um, social outcomes and educational outcomes if they're not looked after properly during this all important period. Next slide please Andrea. 
So what is transition? So transition, transitional care even is a term used to describe services that seek to bridge this kind of care gap. Um, it has been defined as the purposeful planned movement of adolescents and young adults with chronic physical and medical conditions from child centred to adult orientated healthcare systems. And then with transitional care, the aim, main aim being to support young people in health education as well as their individual development and well-being so that they may reach their maximum potential in, in all areas of their life. And actually, I've just attached here a really good toolkit that's been produced by Helen, Helen and Douglas House Hospice, which some people who work in transitional care refer to. Next slide, please, Andrea. So there are a couple of key um, documents um around transition it was kind of described as the forgotten kind of care group despite it being such an issue um but more recently government and local legislation actually is becoming increasingly more focused on this and what we do find is that tr transition is is quite the buzzword of recently um and some of these key documents that I put here were pretty damning especially the CQC report which showed that you know there are massive inadequacies and fragmented care across transitional services. I'm not just talking about in cardiology or CHD. I'm talking in, in lots of other disease groups um, like diabetes as well. In fact, there was a survey um, uh, in, um, looking at a paediatric diabetic service and it was found that 21% of services still organise the transfer of adolescent to adult care by letter only and that was what they considered transition for those young people. And of course, we know it's so much more than that. And then here there are, uh, I've also attached here the NICE 2016 guidelines with relation to um, care of um, children transitioning to adult services. Next slide, please. So the NICE guidelines, uh, you know, are important um, and it's fundamentally what we, um, that underpin the transitional care that we give and meet, meeting these main overarching principles. So obviously there's a, it goes into a lot more depth within the NICE guidelines and I do suggest people do have a look at that. But the main principles are to involve young people and their carers in service design, delivery and evaluation related to, to transition. So ensure transition support is developmentally appropriate, taking into account the person's Things like maturity, cognitive abilities, um, clinical needs, um, their care and responsibilities and, and communication needs. Um, so despite it being a service, it's obviously like most care that we do, like all care that we do, it needs to be individualised to that person. We need to ensure that there's transition support. And we do that by focusing on what is positive um, and possible for the young person um, to achieve and identify to them what support is available. And that might not be directly within your own transition service, but external to that too. We use a person-centred approach, which is always obviously really important. So we treat the young person as an equal part partner in decision making, and that's promoting a really important principle of um, transition as well, which is advocacy. And that's something that we should all be, should be involved in. And then the last principle, the last main, uh, main overarching principle is health and social care service managers and children's and adult services should work together in an integrated way to ensure a smooth and gradual transition for young people. So I, I you put your money where your mouth is and try and help us deliver the, the, these services, which, as we all know, is easier said than done. Um, next slide, please. So one of the questions that we get asked a lot. I, I work at the Royal Brompton and Harefield Hospital and, and we're, we're really lucky because we've got um, a vertical model of care. So the, the ICC nursing team and Lucy, my colleague, probably mentioned it earlier on. Um, we're made up of both paediatric and adult um, nurse specialists. And because of that, it lends itself really beautifully to, to transitional care. Um, but we often get asked, why do we not outsource our transitional care? in a similar way that other services do to the CHD team where they have dedicated transition nurses. And they do do an excellent job and they do an incredible job with CHD and all the literature there is available to see what amazing outcomes they can achieve with young people. But what's become more evident and through um, a lot of kind of service evaluation is that, you know, it, CHD transition just doesn't cut the mustard when it comes to ICC um, transition. And that's because there are a couple of disease specific factors within ICC that, that make it so. So we know that 
a lot of people with CHD get diagnosed at a very young, early age. And we know that that's not always the case, despite the previous um, talks, not always the case within ICC. And that often th there's a hot phase in adolescence that we need to be more prepared for and prepare the young person for. As I mentioned, being diagnosed later on in life, they haven't grown up with a condition. They're not indoctrinated into to a care system. So this might be something that's completely new for them when they get referred or if a family member gets diagnosed. There's the difference between a psychological, um, the impact of a psychological being at risk to sudden death um, and potentially even a previous cardiac arrest. So within the family or within them. And that's not something CHD always has to contend with. We also know that feeling well, particularly in some of our with our inherited arrhythmia conditions, um, is not always an indicator of risk. And so therefore, as we know anecdotally, that compliance and attendance, particularly among the, amongst these young people, can be really, really difficult. We also have to deal with the influences and, and of course this stretches everywhere, but more so if, if a fam there's a family full of people who are affected, but you know, their influences and learned health behaviours from other family members who may also have a diagnosis can sometimes be really beneficial. We can use that to our advantage, but sometimes it can have the complete opposite effect too. Then of course, there's the huge area of the psychological burden of having an inherited condition or a genetic condition. And that's where our psychologists um, and genetic counsellors and also the, the CNSs come into their own. And then also transitioning well people with no confirmed disease. Now, something that some services don't prioritise and that's understandable. But, you know, if they're undergoing family screening, they need to understand why they're being um, they're coming in and having tests for, for familial screening and the importance of them coming back when they're a bit older, too ensure that uptake is still there. So these are all things that we have to contend with within ICC. Next slide, please. So what we did here at the Brompton Harefield is that we created our own dedicated ICC nurse led transition service. And this was all on the back of a lot of work that one of the CNSs in our team did back in 2015. She came into the team, had an interest in transition, was like, hey, hey, what are we doing here? With, with transition and she, she made she she created a project and looked at what young people are missing out on what their current experiences was and, and what they wanted and then since 2015 we've probably reviewed this a handful of times through um, patient questionnaires feedback forms more focus groups and this is kind of what we're looking at today so we now have a, a nurse led dedicated um, transition service like I said we carry out ad hoc nurse led transition consultations for all young people between the ages of 12 and 22 across all consultant led ICC clinics. Once a month, we have a dedicated nurse led clinic. Um, it's a virtual clinic. It started virtually um, during COVID before that it was face to face, but actually it lends itself much more now virtually. And we can see a lot more people in that clinic. And that's again because of space. And we book people in there between the ages of 14 and 19. Um, but again, like I said, it doesn't mean they don't have transition consultations before that or after that, but they're more on an ad hoc basis. Consultations are all documented and sent to patients for their records, of course. And it's also kind of almost looks like a care plan to and a, and a record of what's happening. And within that, there's a goals set for next time we see them. We obviously do the usual CNS stuff, which is CNS support, telephones, um, we have outpatient and inpatient presence um, we've created some dedicated literature. And we're also um, really proactive when looking at young people, um, ICC days. We had one a couple of years ago just before um, COVID at um, Chelsea Football Club and we're hosting one, another one again this coming February, in fact, for all young people that are affected with ICCs within our, within our organisation. But I guess that's more of the patient focused um, services. Beyond that, there are other things that make up a service and not just a clinic. And that's what we really want to impress upon is that transition isn't just a clinic, it is a service. So we have regular ICC nurse team transition meetings. And we also have dedicated complex ICC transition um, handovers when someone is being transferred to adult. And we might get the, well, we do get the involvement of the psychologist and safeguarding within those mini MDTs. And we have a dedicated pro forma where we can hand over so nothing gets missed. 
but we are pre very present and got our feet firmly under the table in our um, trust transition steering group so that we can learn from and, and hopefully direct transitional services across cross cardiology within Royal Brompton and, and Harefield hospitals. We have really strong links with a lot of charities, including the marvellous Brompton Fountain that's based at the Brompton, who really help us out no end. Um, we have an absolute medical uh, MDT approach to all of the healthcare needs of our young people, and that often involves psychology, genetic counsellors, physiologists, pacing technicians. That prior to COVID, we used to invite along to clinic, and now we're working out a way to be able to deliver that kind of input as well virtually. Um, and of course, that extends then to our ICC MDT, that, that um, a large ICC MDT that it occurs every Friday, where these young people often get, will get presented as well at times. And we do re regular, regular research and regular audit. Next slide, please. So this is an example of one of our proformers. So um, the the different um, headings that you can see there in the grayed out boxes are all in line with nice recommendations, but also kind of changed and made a bit more bespoke to um, ICC service. And this is something that we do for all transition consultations when we see young people. And, you know, we do encourage family members or any significant adults to attend with them if they want to, but it comes a point as well where we will start asking young people, you know, to attend some of these on their own or part of the consultation on their own. Next slide, please. So this is just a couple of photographs from our last transition uh, transition day. Um, we've got another one, like I said, coming up in February. It was fabulous. It was sponsored by Brompton Fountain and afterwards the young people all wanted a bit of a tour around Chelsea Football Club, which they got, and we often get really, really good feedback from this from these days. Next slide, please. Sorry, I know I'm going over and whizzing through. Nearly there. I promise. So digital digital care, I mean, it's everywhere. It's not changing. I know some people are very back to face to face, but digital care is going to be is here, but there are a couple of key things that we need to think about when it comes to young people. And I guess that's access, the same as adults as well, confidentiality and also safeguarding often gets brought up as a, as a, a key issue when looking after young people um, in an outpatient setting. How do we meet the safeguarding needs? And this is something that does need to be considered, but there are ways around this. Next slide, please. So then finally, going forward, things to think about. Um, one transition isn't a single event. It's uh, it's a process and it doesn't end once that person gets transferred to adult services. What we know through the projects and things that we're doing, we've got a big project um, that's been run by the, uh, the nurses at the Royal Brompton and Harefield at the moment looking at transition across the whole trust. Um, is that we need to change with what the, what, what the young people need and want and what their experiences are. But a part of that is education and training for staff itself, and that goes beyond nurses it means the doctors as well medics everyone that's involved in their care we need to start thinking more about benchmarks uh, within ICC transition and how these can correlate to wider um, national led guidelines we need to constantly be ordering and measuring the success of what we're doing that's what we're doing at the moment and hopefully we hope to publish those results soon but this is something that's really important, of course. And then there's the issue of the 25 to 30 year olds, which aren't strictly transition, but we do see that they are a key group and have a lot of similar needs to young people and men. So this is something we need to think about too. Next slide, please. I think that's it. So, I mean, to conclude a couple of things, transition is, specific, is a speciality within itself. And we could actually create a team just around transition. It keeps us that busy. We've got over 3000 young people known to the ICC service just in the Brompton and Harefield alone. So there are a lot of people out there that are in need of something like this. Um, should we be pushing more for a dedicated, unique ICC transition services? I think so. I think that's where we're going and more work needs to be done to that end. Like I said, more research is needed into patient experience and development in terms of um, the educational needs of the healthcare professionals looking after them is really important when we're looking at sustainability of these services. Thank you. Sorry about that. No worries. Thank you so much, Bethan, for a fantastic talk. And um, uh, sorry about all your technical difficulties, but we didn't notice it. It was fantastic. So that 
um, brings us to the close of the paediatric part of our um, education session. And um, we'd be pleased to know there's time for a, a short break now and then we will resume our neuromuscular metabolic and mitochondrial. And we will start again at 3.45 with Professor Jerry Carr White um, talking to us about cardiac complications of uh, metabolic disorders. So thank you very much to our morning speakers um, and I'll see you all again at 3.45. Thank you very much. <laughs>